Welcome to the world of the Transco High Performance Shift Kit. In this video presentation, we'll show you step-by-step -step how to beef up your torque flight transmission fast and easy with a Transco Performance Shift Kit. You'll love it. This transmission is about to come along. It is a good idea to refer to the written instructions while you are watching this installation video. Please note that the term overdrive in this video means that the fourth gear is an overdrive gear. Many refer to this. This video shows a typical installation with the trans still in the vehicle. It will help you install this kit with confidence. While you are watching this video, stop the tape often and read the instructions. The booklet has the specific instruction. Follow the booklet to the letter through the entire installation. During the installation, finish and review each step before moving on. When installing springs, follow instructions for customizing options, size, location, and color. When drilling holes, follow instructions for their location, size, and customizing options. Follow shift customizing options when they apply to your installation. These are the typical tools needed to do the installation. First, let's road test the vehicle to see if the trans is in good working condition. We just want to make sure it has three forward gears and reverse. If your vehicle has an overdrive unit, then we'll check to make sure it has fourth. Here's how. Let's manually shift the transmission by pulling the shift lever from park to reverse. Now back up a short distance to feel reverse. Pull the lever to manual low and accelerate. Then move it up to second. And now to the D position. Then if you have an overdrive unit, push the overdrive off button to the on position to feel forth. Stop the vehicle. Move the lever to the D position. Push the gas pedal to about one quarter throttle and feel the one, two and two, three upshifts. Again, if you have overdrive, then at 45 to 50 miles an hour, push the OD button to feel overdrive, which is fourth. This will tell us if the valve body is working normally. Then try some upshifts at three-quarter throttle to see if the clutches and bands are in normal condition. They're holding okay, so let's get started. Release the hood latch. Let's raise the hood. Remove the transmission dipstick and lay it aside. Okay, let's jack the front of the vehicle up like this. Now place two stands, one here and one here. Okay, let's jack up the rear. When you're done, it should look like this. Please use sturdy jack stands. To install this kit properly, you will absolutely need the rear wheels off the ground so they can rotate freely. Before we go under the car, let's gather the required tools to do the overdrive unit. We will need three sockets, a 7 16 one half, and a number 25 torque socket. You may need to go to your local parts house for this socket. We need a 3H speed handle, needle nose pliers, side cutter pliers, long screwdriver, small screwdriver, drain pan, an old wire coat hanger, and some wiping rags.
Loosen the last bolt slowly and let the oil run over the rear edge of the pan. Look here in the pan, there's some debris, which is normal. This magnet is to collect any steel filings. This one has about the normal amount of filings, no problem here. Let's keep going. Lay the pan and gasket aside for now. Now let's remove the filter. If the transmission oil is still hot, protect your hands with a rag. Have the drain pan in position to catch the fluid that will run out of the filter and valve body. Remove these three number 25 torque screws and lower the filter. Notice the three filter screws are longer and have larger washers. Put the filter and the screws into the transmission pan. This connector here goes to the solenoids on the valve body. We need to unhook this connection. Carefully lift this tab and pull upward to unhook. Just let the connector and wires lay aside. It'll be okay. Now let's disconnect the linkage up here on the driver's side. We need to loosen these two bolts and remove these levers. Use a short 7 16 combination wrench and a screwdriver to remove them. Loosen this TV lever first. Now using a screwdriver, pry upward to remove the lever. Like this. Now loosen this bolt and remove the manual lever. If your trans has any dirt in this area, clean it off before removing the valve body. The drain pan still needs to be in place to catch the fluid that will drain from the valve body and transmission. To help remove and install the valve body, let's put the transmission into the manual low position before we start. Take an old wire coat hanger and cut and bend it like this. Hook this in in the pan bolt hole here. Hook the other end toward the front here. This will allow the valve body to be supported when we lower it and remove the parking rod E-clip. Remove these last 10 bolts from the valve body. Rest here for a minute or two. This will allow most of the fluid to drain. Now put your hand up here on top of the connector and carefully push down as you pull down on the valve body. Let the valve body lay on the hanger like this. Remove the E-clip. It's right here. Lay the clip in the pan. It's small. Don't lose it. Unhook this end of the coat hanger and lower the valve body until the electrical connector and linkage shaft is free from the case. Notice this accumulator and spring here. They will try to fall as you lower the valve body. Hang on to them. Lay them in the pan. That's it. If your trans has a double wrapped band, and it looks like this, 
with the adjusting screw here, snug it with a short wrench, back out the screw three and a half turns, and tighten the lock nut for proper adjustment. If your trans has a servo arm like this, with the adjusting screw here, snug it with a short wrench, and back out the screw six turns, and tighten the lock nut for proper adjustment. If the easy way doesn't work on your vehicle, you will have to readjust the band and move on. Let's take these parts to the bench. Lay them out on the bench and clean them. Let's take a minute or two to rest. We suggest at this time to read and understand the instructions. Let's turn off the tape and read. Remember, we have a four-speed, so our valve body will look like this. All the screws in this valve body are number 25 Torx head. Remove the pressure regulator retainer and springs by removing these three screws. This one here first. Then this one. And finally this one. Lay the retainer, springs, and screws aside for now. Your trans may only have one solenoid at this location. That's okay. It has overdrive without lockup. Look, ours has two at this location. We have both overdrive and lockup. Remove these 13 torque screws that hold the valve body sections together. Let's lift off this top section that has the solenoid wires hooked to it and lay it aside for now. Remove this plate and lay it on the top section. If you have a three-speed, your valve body won't have this top section and plate. Next, lift this channel casting off the main valve body. Lay it aside. When removing the channel casting, watch for a steel ball and spring in the upper left-hand corner of the valve body, like this one. If your valve body has this bypass ball and spring, set it aside for now so that it won't get mixed in with the valve body check balls. The main body has a manual valve here. There are seven balls in the main body, one large, and six small. Don't worry, the booklet and this video will show you where they go. Let's turn the valve body over and dump the check balls. Gather the balls and put them in a safe place. We will be using them in a few minutes. Now clean and dry this section of the valve body. valve body over and move to the edge of your bench like this. To file this notch the easiest, use the edge of a larger file like this. File a notch about halfway through the thickness of this partition and about three-eighths of an inch wide. It will look like this when you're done. Good job! Now, clean the valve body. The edge of the narrow land must just enter the partition at A. If the left edge of the narrow land does not enter partition A, 
Then very carefully bend the arm with big pliers until the edge just enters partition A. Most are okay and need no bending. If you're working on a three speed, then do this. If your narrow land does not enter partition A, then file this edge until the narrow land enters partition A. A hammer and tap the orifice in about one inch. It has to be in past this hole here. Reinstall the plate and screws. Tighten them evenly. Move the selector to the low position. This will help to install the valve body later onto the vehicle. This valve body is ready to be installed. Lay it in the clean pan with the filter and pan bolts. Position the gasket on the pan. Go to page 8, step 2, and measure the distance between the pan holes marked X. If the distance is about 14 and a half inches, then install this cup orifice into this hole. Use a flat nose punch and a small hammer and tap it in just below flush. Make sure this manual lever shaft seal and solenoid hole are clean. Now lube this seal and solenoid hole. You'll need some patience here to get this park rod into proper position. Here's how to do it. Push this rod rearward until it passes through a slight barrier. You will feel some resistance as it passes through the parking pole mechanism. Now pull forward until the rod just comes against the back side of the parking mechanism. Lift the valve body up toward the case while holding the accumulator and spring in place. Start the manual lever shaft and electrical connector into the case holes. Again, use the same coat hanger to hold the valve body in position. Push the valve body down onto the hanger. Let's hook up the rod to the rooster comb. Insert the pin into the rooster comb hole and install the E-clip. Lift the valve body back into position. Let's start two valve body bolts here and here. Tighten them snugly for now. Now remove the coat hanger wire. Now reach up here and install the outside manual lever and TV lever.
Make sure the levers move the manual valve and TV valve freely. Have a buddy put the shift lever in park. If the manual linkage is hooked up correctly, the drive shaft won't turn when in park. Look, ours locks. And when we move the lever, it unlocks. Looks like the lever and rod are hooked up okay. Let's keep going. Don't forget to rehook the electrical connector for the solenoids here. Looks good. Install the rest of the valve body bolts and tighten evenly. Now remove the three filter screws and install the filter and tighten the screws evenly. Look things over carefully. Everything looks okay. And if you have a three-speed, the valve body would install like this. Let's install the pan and gasket. Lift the pan into place and start these two bolts two or three turns. Now install the rest of the pan bolts in a few turns. Now tighten them all evenly. Double check each bolt. TV linkage adjustment. There are several different types of linkages. Please refer to a service manual for proper adjustment. Install the air cleaner. Add four quarts of fluid and start your engine. Now immediately add more fluid. It will take two and a half to four quarts more. Check the gauge. Look, it's still about a pint low. Let's add and recheck. There we go. It is still just a little below full. After it warms up, we'll check it again. While the vehicle is still in the air, hold the brake and run through the gears from park to reverse, neutral, D, second, and now first. Let's move the selector to D and accelerate, checking for up shifts. As it shifts, watch the speedometer change speeds. There's the 1 2 shift, the 2 3 shift, and if you have overdrive, then push the OD button and feel forth. Okay, we can lower the car. After our road test, we will check the fluid level again. Let's road test the vehicle and check its new performance. Start with some light throttle up chips and feel for the one, two, the two, three, and if you have overdrive, then push the OD button and feel forth. This will tell us if the valve body is working normally. Do we have good, quick, crisp shifts with no delays? Yes, we do. Then try some up shifts at three-quarter throttle to see how the shifts get firmer with throttle. This one is okay. Let's go have some fun. Yes, this transmission has come alive. We thank you for using Transgo products and look forward to serving you again with any of the other products that you might want or need. 
Research and field testing is the heart and soul of Transco. We hope you have as much fun using this kit as we did in making it. Have a nice day.